Hey everyone, this is Tony Teaches Tech. I'm Tony, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to use fail to ban to prevent brute force attacks on your system. Now, this will work for any Unix operating system, but I'm going to be using Ubuntu in this tutorial. And the way that fail to ban works is that it monitors your log files for authentication failures. And if it sees a certain number of authentication failures over a certain protocol from a certain IP address, it'll actually create a firewall rule uh, to block that IP address from accessing that from accessing your remote server. So, um, and and this is all configurable. And what I'm going to show you in this video is how to configure uh, this some of these basic settings for specifically SSH in this case. So, um, if that's something you want to learn how to do, let's go ahead and get on into the tutorial here. Okay, so I'm on my remote server here via SSH at this IP address. And the first thing is to install fail to ban. So let's do an apt install fail to ban. And this will go ahead and install that type Y to continue. And that'll take up just about two megabytes of space here. Um, I've, that was really quick. Um, what? Let's just check the status. Let's do a system CTL status fail to ban and by default it is up and running now uh, there are some configuration files in so let's go into the etc fail to ban directory and in here you'll see um, fail to ban.conf and you'll see jail.conf now for each one of these uh, it's recommended that you create a copy of it with a dot local extension so for example we can copy fail to ban.conf and rename it to fail to ban.local. And the other important one is jail.conf. So copy jail.conf and make a jail.local file. And we wanna make sure we put the F here. Okay, so basically the reason we do that is because, and it says it in the, the, the comment section in each one of these configuration files that um, if there is an update to fail to ban, it could potentially overwrite the main configuration file. So it's better to make a copy of them in a local file. And that's what fail to ban is actually gonna look at, those local files here. So um, let's look at uh, jail.local here. And uh, what you can see up here at the top, what I wanna point out is that by default, SSH is enabled. So right off the bat, um, if we, let's get out of here and if we do a fail to ban dash client status, you'll see that SSHD is enabled and the terminology they're using here is jail. So the, the number of, um, lists the number of jails is one at this point i should say so let's go back into the jail.local and let's start down let's start down in the ssh daemon section so uh by default like you saw up top that was enabled let's go back up there and show you that again um just to understand this so if we wanted to explicitly enable this uh we can type enabled equals true under this ssh D section. So there's this is broken up into different sections based on the, the application. So Drop Bear has its own section. Apache Auth has its own section. Uh, but again, in this tutorial, we're just going to um, focus on SSHD, SSH daemon. So um, again, if we wanted to enable Drop Bear, we can do enabled equals true. But again, we're not doing that in here. So um, with this enabled, let's look at, uh, let's go back up to the top of the file and right up here within the first few lines, you'll see a very important series of configuration options. So we have ban time, uh, find time, and max retry. So basically what these options are saying is that if you experience five failures, authentication failures via SSH within 10 minutes of time, that IP address is gonna be banned for 10 minutes. Okay, so these are configurable to whatever you want them to be. I think for just the sake of this demonstration, we'll change this to uh, max retries of two. It will keep 10 minutes um, within a 10 minute period of time and they'll be banned for 10 minutes. So uh, let's save that and let's do a test. Um, and again, if we look at the status, that will still be enabled, that jail. So what we want to do is open up a, well, I actually already have another uh, remote SSH session here at this IP address, and we can kind of monitor what's going on here. So let's try to log into this server over here via SSH, and we're going to purposely fail to log in by providing the wrong credentials. So let's do SSH 
root at 23.92.26.196. Hit enter. We'll type in a fake password. Hit enter. Type in a fake password. Hit enter. Permission denied. Another fake password. Hit enter. Now, the, the thing that I thought was interesting when I first came across fail to ban was that only counts as one incorrect attempt to log in via SSH. Even though we get like three tries technically, this is only one authentication attempt. Um, because I guess uh, separately you can configure SSH how many different uh, attempts you want. But from fail to ban's per perspective, this was just one uh, attempt, right? So we have to do that again. So let's go through that. Type in a fake password. Type in another fake password. And one last time, hit enter. And at this point, we should now, our IP address should now be blacklisted and we should not be able to even get to the, the prompt for a password at this point. So let's try that uh, this one last time here. So SSH root at the IP address and it is asking us for a password. So I'm curious why that's the case. Let's look at the log on um, the server side here. Let's look at the fail to ban log file. And you'll see down here, if we make this a little bit bigger, that it is indeed supposed to be banning this IP address uh, via SSH. So I'm curious why that's even allowing us to uh, prompt us for a password. And maybe maybe I just did that, maybe I beat the firewall to it because it looks like it's timing out now. So um, SSH root, yeah, so now now it's refusing the connection. So I was just a little bit quicker than uh, fail to ban in this case. So yeah, as you can see in the log file here, um, it, it found all of our authentication failures and from this IP address and it ended up banning us. So for the next 10 minutes, this IP address won't be able to uh, even access the SSH protocol. It's gonna refuse that connection thanks to fail to ban. Um, definitely configurable. You can up or down or change those values however you want. Um, I do wanna point out a few other things here. So let's go back into the jail.local file. Um, also in here you have ignore IP, I-G-N-O, ignore IP. Um, so right here, oops, sorry about that. If you un uncomment this line and give it your uh, IP address, so I won't give it this one, uh, but just say your IP address is 53.23.192.54, something like that then um, you won't be affected by the rules that you create because you can you can fail as many times as you want logging in via SSH, but it doesn't matter because you're on the white list. It's not gonna, these rules won't apply to you. Um, so that, I just wanna make you aware of that. And also I wanna make you aware of the um, dest mail, dest email uh, option here. So. If there is an authentication failure, um, b based on how many times you have defined in this jail.local file, and it ends up banning an IP address, then you can be notified via email that that had to happen. Now, if there's a lot of attempts on your server, um, you might not wanna be notified by email, but if it's more a smaller server with not too many attempts, it might be good to know that uh, that happen without coming into your system and looking at the log. So you can simply type your IP address here, Tony at Tony Teaches Tech, and um, then that'll send an email to you. You just have to make sure that you apt install the send mail command on your system. Um, I think that's about it. All that I want to go through with you guys in this video today. If you have any questions about fail to ban, let me know in the comments below. This wasn't meant to be a comprehensive video, but more of an introduction to fail to ban and some basic security settings that you can apply. Um, if you wanna see more Ubuntu Debian security settings, check out some of these videos over here, how to lock down and uh, harden your system. Um, I wanna thank you guys for watching. Please like this video if you got some value out of it. Subscribe for more videos like this from me in the future. And if you do, I'll see you in the next one.